Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. And now for something totally different. This review covers the very subjective topic of model kit box art. As model builders, you've seen it all, so let us know your thoughts on the subject. Now, here we'll explore how it can be used as well to uncover a bargain. There are two spheres of thought regarding box art. On one hand, the model manufacturer's marketing is only aimed at getting you to buy the kit. On the other hand, as a builder, you would use the box art to determine whether the kit inside represents what you expect from the model. And from that perspective, good box art will show the actual built model on an attractive box cover. Drawings of the model only depict an artist's talents and photos of the real subject are not useful to determine what you're really getting in the box. Oh hey, uh, that's uh, Newton, uh, that's Program Director. Come on in, Newt, what's your question? So what you're saying is that the bad box art is the good box art. That's kind of like the opposite world at Cars movie, where Lightning McQueen says, Oh, right, that makes perfect sense. Turn right to go left. In this first example, we're going to explore some subtle changes that make a difference. In this 1998 release, the 53 Ford comes in uh, white over red, and it's a nice snappy looking kit. The next release, reboxed in 2013, featured a white on black version. Now, let me tell you the secret. Even the newer kit is less appealing from a box art perspective than the red car. That kit, however, tends to sell for more money in auctions and hobby outlets. It's just that the human eye is more readily drawn to the red one. The older red kit would have significantly more degradation of decals and plastic, and probably more handling damage. So there's your bargain factor. Look for the less attractive box art release for better average prices. Now we'll take a look at some box art that was given radically different treatments for the same basic model kit. In this 2005 rendering, we see a mellow yellow street burner on some dingy pavement. Now the colors at the car's top clash in similar shades up there, and overall the appearance is just blah. But in this 2019 reboxing of the same basic kit, the artist places the gorgeous green of the car against the bright orange background of a tropical paradise. Although it's still too new to tell for sure, I'll bet in the future the mellow yellow box art will command much less money overall, same kit, more cash. Released in 1997, this box art used nicely contrasting colors and the actual built model, but with a bland color type of gold. Now, had they added some side graphics or pinstripes or used a different color, it would have helped a lot for the visual appeal of this box art. Now, although the contrasting box colors were dropped in this 2004 release, the car itself was given a nice purple mist color with a, a black dashboard and boot cover, and a set of much more pleasing red striped tires. Although it's not as useful to the builder as, this, uh, as the others, this artist's rendering for the 2020 release of the same basic kit came in bright blue with a snappy, clean, contrasting box color to match. It's nice, clean looking, and it's got a great marketing appeal. In this classic kit reboxing from 1969, which was also done more recently, um, it was molded in gold plastic, and it featured a psychedelic coloration of the times. Released in 2005, this kit was um, given a bland light blue treatment on an actual built model. Now, with white seat inserts, it just looks plain vanilla, but uh, it's essentially the same kit as the 69 psychedelic version 
which was redone in 2016. But even the new one and the older one will command more money than this bland looking uh, box art released in 2005. In this 1997 reboxing of the uh, 71 Duster 340, you get a snappy red duster in front of a barn. Good contrasting colors. Looks great, right? Now for a look at the actual built model and a new reboxing in mustard yellow, you get to see what you're really getting inside the kit. Now which would you rather buy? If you chose the red one, you'll have to pay more money. Same kit though. Now that you've seen some of the good and the bad, what do we mean by ugly? Well, ugly is in the eye of the beholder, but sometimes you can't help but scratch your head and say, what were they thinking? And so, in conclusion, over time and all things being equal, the box art that uses the actual model will be the most useful and most of the times less attractive box covers, yet still least expensive when it comes to buying the same basic mold kit. If you do a little homework, you can figure out what you're getting inside is the same thing unless you need some features uh, on the reboxings and get a lot uh, more model for a lot less money. So, what are your thoughts on the subject? What box top gets you to buy a model? Do you compare vintage kits for features and price? Or would you choose the ugly kit if it was the same basic model? What's the best and worst box art that you've ever seen? We'd like to know.